Successful venous examination will result if attention is paid to these important factors. Equipment selection, room setup and patient positioning, and proper examination technique. The kind of ultrasound equipment being used will greatly influence the quality of the study. One should select a high-resolution imager, preferably with an integrated pulsed range-gated Doppler. Special consideration should be given to selecting an imager with excellent resolution in all fields of view. This is important because many of the structures to be examined are very small and may move quickly from a very superficial position to a deep field. Some imagers without variable focusing capabilities will do well with vessels in the midfield, but be unable to clearly resolve targets in the near or far fields. Emphasis should also be placed on obtaining an imager with excellent grayscale. This combination of high resolution and excellent grayscale will allow identification of lightly echogenic thrombi that may be missed on imagers without these qualities. The imager being used should have the ability to penetrate to a depth of five to six centimeters. There is always a tug of war between probes that allow enough penetration without sacrificing too much image quality. Recently, several manufacturers have addressed this problem quite well, producing probes, usually operating between 10 and five megahertz, that allow visualization even into difficult areas like the adductor canal or into the deep calf while still providing excellent image quality. Proper setup for this examination is extremely important. Neglecting these simple preparations can greatly complicate the examination and even lead to erroneous results. The first consideration is to work in a warm examination room if possible. A cold environment causes the veins to contract, making small veins even smaller. A thermostat in the examination room is optimal. However, most examination rooms are not so equipped. And many studies are done at the bedside where room temperature is not controlled by the examiner. A solution we have found effective is to provide the patient a warmed blanket whenever the room temperature is cooler than desired. We also do this whenever the patient complains of being cold. To examine the lower extremities, the legs must be well below the level of the heart. This allows for pooling of blood in the legs, thus enlarging the veins. This is of great benefit when imaging the calf veins. Omission of this preparatory maneuver is the most common reason for inadequate identification of the deep calf veins. The best way to accomplish this is to place the patient in a reverse Trendelenburg's position this is where the bed or table remains flat, so the patient is not bent in the middle, but the entire surface is tilted, so the head of the patient is elevated. As a general rule, the more elevation, the better the result. A 10 to 20 degree tilt is usually sufficient. Another way to achieve dilatation of the veins is to have the patient sit up on the edge of the bed and dangle their legs. The examiner sits in a chair and rests the foot of the leg being examined in his lap. This technique can be most helpful when the veins being examined are poorly visualized because of their small diameter. It may be quite clumsy, however, if the probe being used has a large footprint or the scan head has a long handle. Some examiners who are using equipment with small scan heads use this position on all patients who can sit up. One word of caution. The more elevation, the harder the veins will be to compress. This must be kept in mind when doing maneuvers that enlarge the veins. Once the bed has been placed in the reversed Rendellenberg's position, the patient is placed in the supine position to begin the examination. The examiner should inform the patient that the examination will involve no injections. This often calms the anxious patient and allows for better cooperation during the test. The leg being examined should be positioned with the knee slightly bent and the hip slightly externally rotated. This is accomplished by so instructing the patient and carefully guiding the leg until it is in the desired position. Some patients may not be able to comfortably externally rotate the hip 
unless they move slightly onto their side. Some patients may not be able to do this at all, recent hip replacement patients, for example. However, if this position can be comfortably and safely achieved, it will make examination of the groin and thigh areas much easier.